Come on and give him some praise in this place today. Come on, lift him up today. Lift him up, lift him up. In this place today, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. He's our gyro. He's more than enough, more than enough, more than enough, more than enough. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. How much more does he love you? up in us loving God but let us never forget how much God loves us come on somebody today how much 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 he loves you you can forget it sometimes because of the circumstances and what you're going through everything that you see going on around you can make you forget and, 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 and get caught up in your emotions. When you forget, you know what? When you woke up this morning, God loves you. When you went to bed last night, God loves you. When you wasn't even thinking about him, God loves you. When he took time to say, I'm going to form you, I'm going to do some new things in your life, God loves you. When he said, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear no evil. That is God saying, I love you. When my goodness and my mercy are following you all the days of your life, that is God loving you. When God says, I am your provider, I'm, you're greater than the lily of the field. I care about the sparrow, but I love you even more. Uh oh, how much more? Come on, worship team. How much more? Come on, just sing it one more time. Just sing it. I want you to just get it in your spirit. How much more?
Come on, somebody, give him praise today. Come on, somebody, give him praise, give him praise. Open up your mouth and say praise the Lord. Open up your mouth and say hallelujah. Give him worship, give him praise. He loves us this morning. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you this morning for loving us. Nobody loves us like you love us. And there are many people in this world that are looking for love. We pray today, Father, that even those that are watching, those that are in this place today, they would experience the love of God. Your love is deep. Your love is wide. Your love is high. Let us be rooted and grounded in your love. So, Lord, even as we break the bread of life today, I pray for a fresh anointing. I, I can't rely on last Sunday's anointing. I need a fresh one today. Holy Spirit, I need you. I really, really, really need you, Holy Spirit, today. Speak through me. I decrease that you might increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. In Jesus' name. Amen. As you take your seat, somebody shout hallelujah. If you're watching, whatever vehicle you're watching, write in the chat hallelujah. Come on, somebody write hallelujah. Take your seats and shout hallelujah. Can I teach you something really quick right now? As we fight through our emotions. Were y'all here last Sunday or you heard the word? I encourage you. I don't think it's on our YouTube page yet not there yet. It's on Facebook. <laughs> it will get there soon. But I, I'm not one. You don't really hear me say, look at a word, do you? But I'm encouraging every one of you, you need to see that word. Oh, I get no help in this place today. You need to watch that word about fighting through our emotions. You need to watch. What did I say? Fighting through our emotions. It's, it's about fighting for the faith. Because in one thing, I don't know about you, but I had to exercise this week fighting through my emotions. Anybody else? I had to, oh, 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 no, no, see, you don't hear me. I had to exercise fighting through my emotions. But I learned something that I didn't even get into on, on last week. We're in the book of Jude, if you're wondering where we're at. On last week, I told you, how do you fight through your emotions? I, I, and I said, you gotta be honest and identify your emotions. Stop pretending. I know we're wearing these masks. Some of us hide everything behind our masks. Your feelings are your feelings, but your feelings cannot control you. Because as I said last Sunday, the majority, all of us want control. Don't lie in this place. You want to be in control. Some of us know, you, no, no, I don't want to eat that. Don't tell me when I want to eat. Even from the littlest shell, I see like Ari's in this place. Even Ari at times. I remember there was a time trying to help Ari down the stairs. I don't need your help. Don't help me. She just turned four. What's she saying? I got control. And you think it just ends in the child. It's in all of us. And that's why we, 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 we got to control our emotions. Because why? We, 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 we want to be in control. We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. We, we, we don't want nobody. You know, when we come to church, you know, we, we're in church and we're still practicing social distance. We don't want nobody to tell us where to sit. I know where I want to sit. I want to sit over there. But no, you can't sit there because that's a social. But why can't I sit there? I, I like to sit there. That's where I always sit when I come to church. Why can't I sit there? Ain't nothing wrong with sitting there. Ain't nobody sitting there. But there's a sign that says you can't sit there. I remember when I went to the hospital to visit someone and they told me I had to take off the mask I had and put on their mask. And I'm like, but why my, I just, this is, and I had on my gloves. I had a, you mean, uh, uh, man, we need you to take off your gloves too. 
Look, these, I just put these on in the car. Well, ma'am, you got to take off your gloves and take off this mask and put on our mask. Have you ever had that? And then you're just like, especially when you just put it on. See, I didn't know that was a rule. I didn't know. It. I was like, oh, I got to wear your mask. Why I got to wear your mask? Somebody just pulled it down. And I don't know if someone else just touched that mask. And you know, but, you, but that's safer than me wearing my own mask. No, you came in from the outside, ma'am. And so that mask, you came in. So you've got to change the mask and put, in, put on our mask. If you want to see your doctor, I know at least in my hospital where I go, I've got to put on a fresh new mask. So just as much as I, you can fuss all you want. I don't want to wear no mask. I don't like wearing these masks. I can't breathe good in these masks. If you want to see your doctor, you better put on that mask. Somebody shout control. Somebody shout, Lord, here's my control. <laughs> All right, let me not spend too much time on. Lord, you have control. Lord, you have control today. We are fighting for the faith. Let's go to Jude. Let's go to Jude. I'm not going to rehearse the, the message from last week because I, I, I'm not one, but that message hit my spirit. Let's go to Jude chapter one. I'm in Jude chapter one. I'm using the message Bible today. Uh, I'll probably read uh, from a different translation for some of the passages, but Jude chapter one, I'm just going to read uh, verse three. Jude chapter one, I'm going to read some other verses later, but Jude chapter one, verse three. And this is Jude writing, and he's writing to people. Can I tell you something? He's writing to people that go to church. He's writing to people that, that proclaim and say they love God. And he says, dear friends, I've dropped everything to write to you. And he really wants to write about this life of salvation that we have in common. But he says, I have to write insisting, begging that you fight with everything you have in you for this faith that's been entrusted to us as a gift to guard it and to cherish. Let me say that again. I'm writing, I'm writing to you, I'm insisting, I'm begging. Fight with everything you have in you for this faith that's been entrusted to us as a gift to guard and cherish. This morning, last week was fight through your emotions. This week, I want to talk about fight for it. Somebody say fight for it. And so if I were to break this down a little bit, let me read it in the Passion Translation. Jude 1.3 says, Dearly loved friends, I was fully intending to write to you about our amazing salvation we all participate in. If you're saved, isn't your salvation amazing? But I felt the need instead to challenge you to vigorously defend and contend, basically fight for the beliefs that we cherish. I'm writing to you to challenge you. And that word they used here is contend. And it was used back in those days as of an athlete who in an effort to win puts all of their effort struggling and fighting for the desired result towards, to, to get a desired result toward the desired end. I know that didn't make sense, but that's what it says. That's the definition of we're contending for the faith, we're fighting. Meaning what? We basically are fighting for a desired result. Let me say it again. You're fighting for a desired result. I'm old school. You remember Muhammad Ali? Cassius Clay? Are y'all that young? 
Y'all don't know Muhammad Ali? Uh, Joe Frazier, well, he's just as old. Um, Mike Tyson, thank you, thank you. Mike Tyson, what do they do? They fight for a desired result. They get in the ring willing to have somebody beat them in the head. And, and 10 years down the line, suffer consequences because they want to get a result of getting that heavyweight uh, championship belt. Just so they can say, I'm the champion. Float like a butterfly and I sting like a bee. Just so I can say, I'm a champion. I'm willing to get my head bashed in. I'm willing to beat somebody because I'm going for a desired result. Today, I want to ask you, what are you fighting for? Because it hit me in my spirit. I was really going to talk about fighting against, and the Holy Spirit hit me. Lorraine, you don't need to really talk about fighting against. Because when you know what you're fighting for, it helps you to know what you need to fight against. But many of us don't know what we're fighting for. We come to church, but we think we're fighting to have the church doors open. No, I'm not fighting to have no church doors open. Pastor, you're not fighting for us to get back in the building? No. I was just as good at home. I, I, I don't, don't, don't. My sound man is like, yes, right, Pastor. I, I was just as good at home. In my office, and some of you are like, that's right. I know some people are like, that's right. I, and that's why some of you still aren't here. It's not because you got an immunocompromised system. It's just like you enjoy being home, watching it from home. You ain't got to drive here. You ain't got to fight for parking. You ain't got to look all over. You're like, Pastor Man, I love you. I'll tune in. I can have my coffee. I can, you know, even go to brunch early. I can sit home. I can lay in my bed with my bonnet on, with my do-rag on. I can do whatever I want and watch. I don't got to fight. I'm going to fight to stay home. It's okay. We can be real. I'll see. <laughs> but see, when you know what you're fighting for. And, and the writer said, I want you to fight with everything you have in you for this faith. Point blank. This is what you're fighting for. You're fighting for the faith. Now, let me break this down. What's he mean when he says fight for this faith, fight for the faith? Is he just talking about fighting for believing in God? Because no, because even the devils believe in God. The devil believes in God. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a fight. The devil believes in God. Right? He, he. So, so let's get that straight. Some of you think, well, the devil doesn't believe in God. Stop it. Let me correct that lie right now today. The devil believes in God. The devil was at his right hand. He was right there in heaven with God. So he believes in God more than you believe in God. He knows God's power more than you know God's power. He saw God create the heavens and the earth. He saw what God did out of darkness and nothing and emptiness. He saw what God did. So he believes in God and his power more than every one of us. That's why he was willing to kill uh, uh, all the babies two years and old just to find Jesus, just to find the Messiah, because he believes more than we do. So, so don't say, well, the devil don't believe in God. No, that's not, that's not the truth. So I'm not fighting to believe in God. Because everybody can believe in God. So we're like, Pastor, what, what are we fighting for? We're fighting for what God gave us. He gave us truth. He gave us something where he says, you can't live. See, if I were to read the all of Jude, basically what all of Jude, this one chapter that people really preach about, 
It's talking about you can't live your life any old way. Well, I'm not going to get many amens on that. You can't do whatever you want to do. He says, that's what's going on right now in the church. He says, people want to do whatever they want to do, whatever feels good, whatever turns them on. If it feels good, I feel like doing it. If it feels right, even if it's not right, I'm just going to do it. And that's what was going on back then, and it's going on right now. Just whatever. I, I feel, I, I, just like I talked about last week, I'm just, I, 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 I feel, I don't feel like going to church. Oh, you don't go to church. I don't feel like praying. You don't pray. I don't feel like singing. You don't sing. I feel like cussing somebody out. You cuss them out. I, I feel like I want to be mean today. You be mean. I feel like I want to be just nasty and angry. So I, I, I have a right to be. They did me wrong. So I'm going to be nasty and angry. So we go by our feelings. I know I'm still talking about feelings, but feelings are so key to all of this. And many of us fight for feelings over than fighting for what God said is truth. It's not a deep word today. This is simple. This is, this is so simple. It's like fight for truth. Yeah. Whose truth now? Because when I fight for my truth, my truth's got to make sure it lines up with God's truth. You imagine if, if, if I knew that my Bible said that I ought to love my neighbor as I love myself. I'm going to go here with something. Then we wouldn't have abuse. Now, see, most of you got a picture right there in your mind. You're thinking of uh, uh, usually a male uh, 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 beating up on his wife or his spouse. Correct? But can I tell you something? Many of us abuse each other. Because why? I don't understand that I'm fighting for the faith. When I'm fighting for the faith, it means I'm fighting for you to make it. No, 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 no. You get this. I'm not fighting against you. Look at the person sitting next to say, you're not my enemy. Even if you do me wrong, you're not my enemy. My enemy is and always will be Satan. Let me teach today. That's the enemy. Right? So even if you do something, say something, let me recognize and call out the enemy that's using you. But you're not my enemy. Why do you think when, when, when Peter said to Jesus, Jesus was on his way to, to say, basically, this is it. I'm going to be going to the cross. I'm going to be dying. I'm going to be leaving y'all. Peter said, no, you're not, Jesus. You're not going to leave us. Don't talk like that. You never. Jesus turned up and said, Satan, get behind me. Because he recognized, okay, Satan, you're using Peter to, to say this right now to me, to start me from fighting for what I really came to this earth to fight for. And I'm not going, oh, I'm fighting for my purpose, Peter. I'm Satan, I'm fighting for my purpose. Even though you're trying to use one of my own, one of my disciples, I see you. I see what you're trying to do. I see what you're trying to do in my home, through my kids, through my parents, through my siblings, through my cousins, through whoever. I see See what you're trying to do through my friends. I recognize it's not them, but I recognize it's Satan using them to try to stop me from fighting for my purpose, from fighting to get into my goal. I Satan, I see you and I call you out. That's why the Bible says you got to know the schemes of the enemy. It didn't say know the schemes of people. Are y'all hearing this? Look at somebody else say, you are not my enemy. So then turn back to them and say, so why are you fighting me? Why are you fighting me? Are y'all hearing me today? Why 
are you fighting me? Well, what you mean fighting you? Okay. You, you, when you tear me down, you fighting me. When you talk about me behind my back, you fighting me. When you get in the mood and cross your hands and say, I don't feel like talking to you today, I'm going to give you the silent treatment for the next month or three weeks, especially you married couples. You know what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you the silent treatment. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to do this. Why are you fighting me? Why are you fighting me? You should be fighting for me. When I make it, you make it. Can I, can I just be a little real and raw? Yeah. This is why some of us people of color don't make it. Because we're busy fighting each other. And we've not learned because we're still living like in slave days. And we're not, we not fighting for each other. And, and be like, oh, no, 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 that ain't good on, no, no, baby, that don't look good on you. I'm trying to fight for you. Son, that, son, you don't walk that way. Son, man, son, that's not how you cheat a woman. Son, that's not how you do this. I'm fighting for you. I don't care. No, we the same color. We the same kind. We cut from the same cloth, but that ain't right. We fight for each other. My goal is to see you make it. So sometimes I got to speak truth to you, whether you like it or not. Sometimes I got to say something things whether you like it because I'm fighting for you to get someplace I'm fighting for you to make it that's fighting for the faith it's fighting for the faith it's fighting for the faith we, we oh holy ghost today holy ghost some of us say well, I'm fighting for this relationship. Well, if you're fighting for a relationship, then you ought to be fighting against offense and being offended and staying offended. Well, I'm fighting for the relationship. How are you doing that? How are you doing that? Well, well, Pastor, I'm doing it because, you know, I pray for them. Okay, I don't care how much you pray for them. If you still have an unforgiving heart, go on back to the altar. I don't care how much you, well, I'm praying for them. But you got bitterness in your heart towards them. You feel some kind of way towards them. But I'm praying for them. I, you know what I'll be saying? Don't pray for me. Because <laughs> I don't know what you're praying for me then. So, so, can I just use you, Chris? You stay right there. He was a married man. Going on like 10 years now? 15? How many years you been married now? Oh, just six. Okay, see, just, you look old school married now, brother man. You just look old school married. So, six years. So, think about this, Chris. Think about this. So that means you fighting for your wife and your daughter, right? So when your daughter breaks something of value to you, right? Do you not talk to her? You talk to her, right? Even if you discipline her, even if, well, you don't spank nowadays, right? We don't spank, we do timeouts. I'm gonna preach a sermon on timeout. Because us adults need some timeouts. You're giving all these children timeouts, but you're not taking a timeout for yourself. I don't know. That was a sidebar conversation. I don't know why. I'm coming back to you in a minute. But we need some timeouts. If we would learn how to take time out every now and then, we'd be better. If you learn even as a husband and a father, let me take a time out. It doesn't mean I'm not going to talk to you, but I'm taking a time out to get my emotions together, control myself because I'm fighting for my family. So anywhere I you see, because when I when I'm saying to my wife, I'm not I'm mad with her. I ain't talking to her. I, the devil creeps in. Do y'all get this? 
when we're not talking to somebody and we mad with them and, and, and we don't want to get it right, the enemy has legal right to creep. When you still mad at your wife and unforgiving, don't want to forgive her because she didn't remember something, the enemy has legal right to creep in. So now you think you're fighting your wife and the enemy's like, oh, cool, I got it. He thinks he's fighting Merlisha, but, but really I'm the one now because he's giving me legal permission because he's holding unforgiveness. Are y'all getting this? I know this is a little bit different. I just want to talk to us today because the Holy Spirit is saying, Y'all got to learn what to fight for. Yeah. Pastor, I'm fighting to keep my peace. Well, then if you're fighting for peace, you should be fighting against confusion. What you fighting for? Are you really fighting for peace in your home? Are you really fighting for peace in your body? Well, then what are you fighting against? I'm fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting. The Lord had me look at, at we, we're, we're a house of prophetic, a prophetic house. So I was listening to my prophecies again this week. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of the scripture uh, in Timothy to wage war with your prophecies. Are you fighting for your prophecies? Are you fighting for your promise? What are you fighting for? Because when you realize what you're fighting for, then you recognize I ain't got time for some of this other stuff. I ain't got time for this other stuff. No, you want to pull me down in the gutter? No, I'm not doing it. Because why? I'm fighting for this. I don't got time to fight with you about this. I ain't got time to argue with you about this. I don't got time to talk with you about this. Why? Because I'm fighting for this. I'm fighting for this. I'm fighting to keep my family together. So I ain't got time to argue with you about this. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fighting to keep my, my, my mental, emotional state. I'm fighting so that I ain't got time to be upset with you. What are you fighting for? Ask your neighbor, what you fighting for? What you fighting for? Are y'all hearing me today? If I'm fighting for courage, that means I'm fighting against discouragement. If, if I'm fighting to, uh, uh, you know, everybody wants knowledge. Well, if you're fighting for knowledge, that means you're fighting against ignorance. If I'm fighting for truth, that means I'm doing everything inside of me, like the writer says, to fight against lies and falsehood. What are you fighting for? Are y'all with me? Because see, when I recognize something, if I go down, let, let me hurry up and finish this. But you, dear friends, carefully, Jude, I'm in Jude 1, verses 20 to 21, message Bible. But you, dear friends, carefully, Build yourselves up on this most holy faith. He tells them, this is what you want, I want you to do. I want you to build yourselves up in the most holy faith by praying in the spirit, staying right at the center of God's love. Keep your arms open and outstretched, ready for the mercy of our master, Jesus Christ. Uh, then he goes on to say, verse 22, 23, go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Go after those who take the wrong way. Listen to this. Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. Because the sin itself stinks to high heaven. So you can have mercy on sinners and those who are doing wrong, but, but don't get soft on sin. Even if you see your brother or your sister in church doing it. We're supposed to love them and restore them, but we're not supposed to love the sin. Because why? I'm fighting for you. So I don't love the, the sin that you involved in, but I love you. So I'm going to have mercy and work with you, but I don't love what you're doing. Ah, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. See, because this is where, see, this is how we stop fighting for each other. We see people messing up. We see people going down the wrong street. You know, you see, you ever have a driver go down a wrong way street? What you do? 
Some of you either just get out the way. I toot my horn. Like, even if I can't get, like, even if they can't hear me, it's one way. Because when you're coming down the wrong way, you can cause an accident, not just for yourself, but you can hit me. You can hit somebody else. So when you're going the wrong way, recognize this, you can crash and mess up other people. So you take other people down with you. So for me to sit here, stand here, for us to watch one another go, oh yeah, they just going down the wrong street. Well, but isn't that your brother or sister? And you say, see, we call each other sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. And my thing is, we need to stop doing it. We need to stop doing it. I know some of you like ready to throw me up to church right now. <gasps> We're supposed to call. No, no, no. That's just some, some church ritual we learned to do. Call each other brother or sister, but you don't treat me like a brother or sister. You don't see, see, see my brother. So I'm going to look, I, we might not always get along. We might fight, but, but look, the dog come down to it. I'm going to fight for them. I'm going to fight for them. I'm going to try to do whatever. They might not always like what I say. They might not like me all the time, either. whatever the case, but they're my brother. They're my blood. That's my blood. Well, we call each other, oh, that's brother so-and-so, that's sister so-and-so. And it hit me like, where did we get that from? Where, where did we get that from? And I, I said, well, okay, the Bible says, well, you know, we're supposed to treat each other good who is of the household of faith. But I'm thinking, but, but that's brother so-and-so, that's sister so-and-so. Okay, well, if that's brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, how are you treating brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so? And, and why are you talking about brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so behind your back? Why are you chewing, ch cheating them bad and doing them wrong and doing all manner of stuff? Well, if that's your brother, that's how you treat your natural brother? That's how you treat your natural sister? Well, I wouldn't want to be in your family. Because, see, that's what the world is saying. And that's what Judah's writing to them. The world is seeing this, you all. And Jude was saying to them, look, y'all. Look, look, look. Fight for the faith. Some people have creeped in and living life any old way. Doing whatever in church. Ephesians write this, that you ought to build each other up. How do I build you? Am I fighting to build you up? Or am I fighting to tear you down? Can I ask a question? When's the last time you build up someone? And how did you do it? Building them up, let me give you this. It's two things. Encouragement, exhortation. Encouragement, exhortation. Let me break it down. Encouragement means I'm teaching you how to have courage, how to fight through it. Exhortation means I'm going to speak into you some things that are truth that you might not want to hear. That I'm not going to let you stay stuck in something for too long. And so I sometimes, see, I'm an exhorter. I know people want, Pastor Rain, Pastor Rain, and I, I, you can cry with me sometimes. I ain't going to lie. And I'll let you cry. I will cry with you. I will be with you. But after a while. The Holy Spirit inside of me is going to be like, okay, they need a swift kick. Because what's happening is that emotion is turned into idolatry. I remember there was someone, and I, I've shared this, there was someone that went to another church. And the Holy Spirit said, Say to them because they've been in grief too long. It's idolatry right now. I said, God, I don't know them now. I can't. Who are you obedient to, Lorraine? Are you fighting for them? Do you see the path they're going down? So gently, did it. I spoke the truth in love. And I just said, you know, God loves you. And I said, you know, it's time now. I said, and, and I know you like, Pastor, how could you tell someone it's time to get over their grief? Because of the Holy Spirit. I wasn't trying to do it in my flesh. And so I said to them, I said, you know, you holding on to this so much now 
that is killing you. It's stealing your emotions and, 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 and your peace, your joy. I said, you're idolizing it right now, but you're wearing it on you. And I understand, you know, for funerals, we wear, we wear badges, we wear pins. I said, but this is now a year later. And every day, every day you wear that, every day you're saying, I want to be in grief. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. So I just said, I love you. Do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, left it. It was about a few months later, a person called me up. I said, Pastor Rain, I need to see you. Can I just be honest? I was not in the mood that day. <laughs> I wasn't in the mood. I said, oh, okay. All right. why, why you got, um, can it be like, Pastor Rain, I really need to see you. And the person, I knew where they lived. Can you just drop by for five minutes? Can you, I can't get out. Can you drop by my house? Now you want me to, <laughs> I'm just being real, y'all. And I was like, oh, Jesus. And the Lord says, you better do it. So I heard in my spirit, okay. So I said, all right. I said, okay. And I dropped by. I said, Pastor Rain, do you remember when you spoke to me a few months ago? And what you told me about the grief and what I was going through? I said, oh, yeah, I remember. I remember. They said, Pastor Rain, you don't understand. I had been the walking dead. I've been going to support groups. I've been going and doing all this stuff, but I was not getting any release. I was emotionally dead. Pastor Wayne, no, you, do, you don't understand, Pastor Wayne. And what you did, look it, I'm not wearing the pin anymore. Pastor Wayne, do you see, I'm free. Pastor Wayne, I'm sleeping now. Pastor Wayne, because I, I had to, I let it go and I released it. And she says, here, I want to sow an offering into your church. I want to sow an offering. Oh, okay, to me? Okay, cool. But, but it was for the church. It was for the church. And, and she says, this is all. I want to give more. But this is, I just want to bless because you blessed me. Why? She didn't come here. But she's my sister in the Lord. And the Holy Spirit says, you better fight for her. Because if she stays on this path, you're not going to see her too long. Y'all need to hear this, y'all. If we know what we're fighting for, for fighting to build you up, that even when, when, when I got to say something that's hard, I got to say it. Some of you don't always like when I got to say the hard thing to you. That's why people leave churches. That's Rain said a hard thing to me. I didn't like what she said to me. I've had people come back. You said something to me I didn't like. I'm sorry. I just said what. I, I, I'm sorry. I said, you know, no, I'm not sorry what I said. <laughs> I'm sorry that you hurt by it. But if it's truth, then you're accountable for the truth. Did I say anything contrary to the word? No. So you can't hold me to that. I told you I had somebody call me up and the person basically said to me, the first thing's out of the mouth. I know you're going to say, I told you so. And I said, no. Because why? I dealt with my emotions. I dealt with my stuff. And I could listen to them. I said, no, I'm fighting for you now. I can fight for you. Because I know who you are. And I know who I am in God. And so I'm supposed to fight for you. I had to deal with, okay, I got all to get, no, I got to get this straight. Because right now, God brought it down years later. You got to fight for that person. I said, what? You going to fight for that person. God has wanted to bring some of your enemies like Job. He said, Job, these friends of yours, they're not going to get their deliverance until you pray for them. They're not going to get a blessing. So if you keep holding up just because they're talking about you, stop being petty. There are some people that need a deliverance, but they're waiting for you to get free. So that you can speak to them. 
But get out of your feelings because you'll recognize I'm fighting for them. I don't want to get to heaven. And the Lord say, there's blood on you, Lorraine. Somebody went to hell because you didn't fight for them. Because you let it, all the talk, you let people, you let this, you let that, because you, no, no, Lorraine, fight for them. That scripture, when you read it further and different, it says, snatch them out of judgment. We're supposed to fight for people so bad that we snatch them out of judgment. What that mean? Stop. Can, 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 let me say this to you. Stop telling people to go to hell. Oh, Pastor Ray, you said it. Yes. Stop telling people to go to hell. Only one that should be in hell is the devil and his demons. So stop. Because you mad and you cussing them out. When you ever hear people cuss people out and they telling this someone to go to hell? And the Holy Spirit hit me and say, reverse that curse. Jesus, you better hit. Why? Because cause I know they did you wrong, even in church. But you better fight for them. You better snatch judgment from them. Can, can, can I do a quick example? Pastor Carlos, come here quick. Elias, come here. It's so good to see you, brother man. I, I, I want you to do something. Elias, say, I don't got a mask on, so let me stand up here. Elias, like, 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 act like you. Snatch him. Right? No, 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 snatch him and hold him. You got a mask on. Snatch him and hold him. Come on, snatch him and hold him. All right? Now, now stay down a little. Stay down. Stay down. Because we don't get up so quick. But what he's doing is, I'm snatching you. Okay, because he's down. Go on down further. You younger than me. Come on, go down further. Go on down. Go on down. Have you ever been so down and out? Holy Ghost, help me today. There's some people that are around us that are down and out. That need us to snatch them. To fight for them. To say, I'm going to stay with you till you're able to stand on your feet. Can you fight for them in prayer? Brother, I'm fighting for you. I'm fight I don't know whatever. He tells him to share. He might not even share it to me. He says, brother, I'm fighting with you. I'm fighting that you make it. I'm fighting that you get through everything that you need to get through. I'm fighting that you be the best husband that you need to be. I'm fighting that you be the best businessman that you need to be. I'm fighting that every generational curse will be broken off of your life. I'm fighting for you that you make it. You're going to live past your father. You're going to do more than your daddy. I'm fighting for you. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to fight for you from today forward. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for you. We'd be a different people. I'll fight for your emotional well-being. I'll fight for you to get, get, out, to get out of debt. I'll fight for you. I'm going to fight with you in your marriage. I'm going to fight for you. I think about over the years, how many marriages I fought for. Not to pat me on the back, but the Holy Spirit sometimes said, Fight for them, Lorraine. Get up in the middle of the night. Fight for that marriage. Fight, fight. Come on, fight in prayer. Fight for that son. Fight for some of your children. Fight. Call their names in prayer, Lorraine. Got a prayer list. And call their names. Got some of you on my prayer list. When God says, put, I'll put you on my prayer list. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you, Carmen, that you're going to make it. That you're going to do more than what God says you're going to do. I'm fighting for you that you're going to do more than what you think you're going to do. Fight for you that you're going to make it. Fighting that you're going to make it. Fighting, fighting, fighting that you're going to make it. It's time for us to fight. Get out of your flesh. You imagine if we had a band of men up in here that would fight for one another? Fight, fight.
fight for your sons? Fight for your son? Fight for our brothers? Every man that walked through the door, we fighting for you. They know, no, you're not going to do this alone. That's why people go through Alcoholics Anonymous. They, you know, their sponsor basically is their person fighting for them. It means you can call me anytime of the night. Call me anytime. I'm fighting for you. Get out of that bar. Get out of that place. I'll come to you. you stay wherever you are, but get out of there. I'm coming. I'm coming. Because why? I'm fighting because you're going to make it. You're gonna make, I'm going to fight for you. The world is taking all those steps from the church, from the Bible, and we're not doing it. Fight for me means when you hear somebody talking about me, when you hear somebody talking about me, no, I'm not in that. No, don't talk about my pastor. Don't talk about my church. You keep quiet. If you don't like it, keep quiet. Don't talk about it around me. Go talk about it to, to the air, but not here. Don't talk about my sister, my brother, my church. Yeah, they might be going through, but did you pray for them? Have you prayed for them? Well, then don't talk about them. Shut your mouth. See, that's what we got to be doing. Shut your mouth. Stop letting the enemy creep in. Well, I know what Pastor Carlos did last night. You did? Well, did you pray for him? Did you pray for him? No, I just want to spread some gossip. And don't come in here talking about, I got an unspoken, spoken request. You just want to spread gossip. Did you, did you pray for him? I'm not saying he did anything. But did you pray for him? Did you go and say, Pastor Carlos, man, I saw you. And he could have been witnessing. But I saw you and you assumed. So let me just come and find out so I don't have an art against you. Because if I do that, the enemy creeps in if I don't take care of it. Oh, Holy Ghost. Are we going to fight? Are we going to fight? Can I say some of this to some of you? Thank you, brothers. How many of you have a, you know, it's okay. You were born in a fighting family. You just be honest, just be honest. Y'all don't want to be honest. I saw only a few people raise your hand. Oh, I don't, I'm not in a fighting family. Okay. 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 The majority of us were born in a fighting family. Even if you fought with silence. See, because you, you think fighting more aggressive. Most of us were born in a fighting family. We fought some type of way. But I want you to stand to your feet right now. Let, let me conclude this. I didn't get to do everything, say everything I wanted to say. But Holy Spirit, you know. In the ending verse, Jude says, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless. Before his presence. Because what the Lord taught me was. Can I say this to y'all today? Do you know God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's angels are fighting for you? They're fighting that you would make it. And if we say we are in the spirit, we, yes, I'm a, I'm a blood, but I'm saved. Well, then if you're saved, your DNA means you have new DNA and that your father is God. And if you are God's child, then God is putting you a fighting spirit. Because God doesn't want to see anybody go to hell. And God sends his angels to fight for them. Remember, Daniel was praying for like 21 days. And the angel came before Daniel and says, we were trying, I was trying to get through. 
but Satan resisted me. And we had to fight. I had to call the other angel. Come on, come on, because he's holding us back. Because I'm fighting to get you a word. Fighting to get you the answer. So God says, I put a fight in you. I need you to get back fighting for the faith. Fight for peace. Truly fight for relationship. So stay out of offense. If you get offended, take care of it quickly. What did Pastor Lorraine say? If you get offended. The Bible says, don't give an inch to the devil. We give, we give a feet. We give a whole football field to him. You ever watch, you know I like sports. You ever see when some of these athletes, they get into a fight? The whole team, the whole team. I watch baseball. And, and, and the pitcher, you know, and, and, and the person hitting gets mad and he wants to charge them out. They got players that are in the, what's it? The, oh, y'all watch, y'all watch baseball. In the dugout and, and also back, you know, where they're where they warming up to pitch. The bullpen. They run, they jump over that fence. Why? That's, that's my brother. And it's amazing to me. You know what's amazing? That athlete will change teams. That athlete who was once your enemy and you fought comes to your team. But as soon as he gets on your team, he's your brother. I'm like, wait a minute. You guys just fought three months ago. Oh, he's on my team now. And we're fighting for the same thing. We're fighting for championship. So I got to have his back. I got to fight for him. Why? <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Watch this. Well, you, you know, it's football season. Are you ready for some football? Hey, yes, me too, child. Me too. <laughs> so football season. And them big old pads. I was watching the game the other night and, and, and one of the players pushed one of the coaches on the side. I mean, he pushed him. Them players, I thought they were going to jack him up. People had to hold one another back. Poor referees in the middle like, don't hit me in the middle. Don't hit me. But you on our team. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for you. Even at times when, man, we might not always agree, but we're going to get it right. Okay, agree doesn't mean we're out of, out of order with each other. It just means, okay, I don't agree with you about this. It's no cause for me to hate you. No cause for me to cause confusion. We just have a disagreement. Even if we got to separate for a little while, like, like, like uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas in, in the Bible, but we come back together and we fight together because we're fighting for the same thing. Over here, y'all one family. Y'all are one family. They relate to you, Carmen. Can I just say this to y'all? I was trying not to look over here, and I was trying, Holy Ghost, not to prophesy. Y'all need to get back fighting for each other and fighting for the family. There's some grands, nieces, and nephews. There's some cousins. It's not that they're buck wild. But if you all don't fight for them. Can, can I say this? You four women are powerful. Each one in your own right are powerful. You've been hurt. And you've hurt each other. But it's time to fight. It's time to fight. I'm going to go so far. Holy Ghost, thank you. You need to set up some time to pray together. Even once a month. Get on the call. 
do a conference call, do whatever, FaceTime, do whatever, and pray with each other. You're going to share needs. You're going to share this, my son, my daughter, my cousins, whatever. You're going to share needs. You're not going to, well, you, you know, Pookie's doing this right now. And Pookie ain't done. No, no. Let's pray for Pookie. Let's take Pookie to the throne of grace. And we're going to fight for Pookie. We're going to fight for Pookie that Pookie going to make it. We're going to fight for whoever. We're going to fight for Chandra. We're going to fight for whoever. We're going to fight. We're going to fight for somebody's emotional state. We're going to fight for them. We're going to fight because you've been through, each one of you have been through wars. And you quiet mama over here, you've been through some wars. And you know how to fight. If you didn't know how to fight, many of you, you wouldn't have survived it. That's what I hear in my spirit. You would not have survived, but you fought your way through it. And the Lord says that same fight you used back then, I need you to stir it up in the spirit. Stir it up in the faith and fight for your family. Even when it seems like nothing is changing, don't give up. Even when it looks like it's getting worse, don't give up. Even if it one of you can't make that prayer time together, you all still pray. Do you hear me? Because there's some family members right now who are going through that I mean they're this close to losing it. But your prayers, you will snatch them out. You don't need them to pat you on the back. You're just going to hear the testimony. So-and-so is doing so good now. So-and-so is living like, and we're going to be like, thank you, God. And you will come back on that line. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you for what you did in so-and-so. Thank you for what you did in the family. Thank you for what you did in that marriage, God. Thank you. Put aside all art. Get it right. And fight. Will you do it? There's a reason God brought you all here today. Because y'all better fight. Who's your mama, Carmen? That's your mama. Well, you, you a fighter. And you raised a fighter. And this is your season for deliverance and healing. This is your season for healing and deliverance. For getting those things which are behind. I reach and I press towards the goal, towards the mark. I fight towards it. I'm not gonna miss out. You gotta fight for your grants. There's a fight in you, mama. There's a fight in you, mama. See, the devil should have taken you out when he had the chance a long time ago. But since he did it, you're here to fight. You made it through that. You made it through that. It might have left some scars. It might have left some damage. But you made it through. God says fight. Aunties, fight. Roshi Mandeya Samondia. Rombe shi mande ya sopong de bate ya. Rekon de boshi mande ya raboshi kande ya Come on, people of God, just pray in the spirit. Come on. Rombo de raboshi ya. Fight. Because deliverance and healing is coming to your family. Restoration and reconciliation is coming to the family. I speak it now in the name of Jesus. Under the authority of the power of God. As you fight. As you declare. As you decree it. It's going to happen. Watch what God's going to do. Fight, 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 fight. Bring it down, son. Bring it down, son.
I need some, some women. Hear this in my spirit. I'm just going to be obedient. There's two women in here. I call them young because they're young to me. They're two young women that I need you women to fight for. One is unique and the other one is Abana. So we're going we're gonna to do something prophetically. I, I need at least two women. Two for each. You're going to fight for them in prayer for the next 21 days. You won't call their name. You won't pray to the spirit leads. You will fight for them. So I need two women to go stand next to Abana. And I need two women to come stand next to Unique. Come on, move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Tyra, where were you going? Come on here. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's okay if she got three. It's okay if Abana got three. It's even better. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's even better. I don't know why. But Abana, unique. <sighs> These next 21 days, this next month is crucial. Because I think even for you, unique, it's like getting over the hump. The enemy knows if she gets over, I've lost her. I won't be able to torment her in her sleep. I won't be able to torment her in her night dreams. I won't be able to torment her anymore. You three need to set up a time. You need to go to Unique's apartment. You need to pray through her apartment. Y'all hear me? You need to war. It's not saying she's doing anything wrong. But we fight for our sister. Y'all need to hook up with Abana. You need to fight for her. I don't know what's going on. And I don't need to know. But all I know is what the Holy Spirit said to do. Because Abana... I need you to look at me, Abana. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I come against everything tormenting your mind right now. Past mess ups, everything. You're going to make it. So you three need to hook up with Abana. Get a time and you're going to pray with her at least once this month. You can do it more, but at least once. And you're going to fight for her. Y'all hear this? I know you might say, Pastor, that's who I heard. That's who I heard. I don't know if Walter and Kayla are watching, but I heard your names in the spirit. Walter and Kayla, This month, y'all need to fight together as a couple. Y'all need to pray together like you've never prayed before. This particular month, for the rest of this month, Walter and Kayla, pray. Because what God is about to do in your lives, but you're also fighting for the family. Your extended, your, your immediate family, fight for them. fight Father right now in the name of Jesus everybody just lift your hands wherever you are if you're watching this some of us we need to fight for some family members for deliverance for healing and say right now Lord come on say after me Lord I repent forgive me for anything, for any offense 
that I've held in my heart against my brother or my sister. But today, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to make it right so I can fight. Lord, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight for my natural family. I'm going to fight for my spiritual family. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Come on, I'm going to fight. Pastor Glenda, you need to fight. Pastor Glenda, you need to fight. I know you're tired. I know you're worn because you've been fighting the wrong fight. I know you're tired and you're worn and you're fighting. And the Lord says, because you've been fighting the wrong fight. The Lord says, the next, take the next two weeks and fight in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, Pastor Glenda. Pray in the spirit. And the Lord is going to show you this is what you need to be fighting for. I just heard very strongly call your name, Pastor Glenda. You're fighting for the wrong goal. And when the Lord changes your goal, you're going to watch your strength come like never before. And you're going to be snatching. 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 With mercy and love. Fight, Pastor Glenda, fight. Fight, Pastor Glenda, fight. Come on, congregation, stretch your hands to Pastor Glenda. And say, fight, Pastor Glenda, fight. Fight, Pastor Glenda, fight. Roshan Robo Sataya. Fight, Pastor Glenda, fight. Come on. Fight, Pastor Glenda, fight. It's going to show you the right fight. It's going to show you what to fight for. Because the Lord says you've been tired because you're fighting the wrong fight. I heard that in my spirit. Whew. Can I just flow prophetic for you for a little bit? I, I, we almost out of, we out of time. I got to go. I got to go. Every married couple that's in the house, every married couple that's watching, if your spouse is here, take their hand. If your spouse isn't here, just hold your hand like this. That's right. Fight for your husband. Go on up there, girl. Fight. Won't you? Cook with this? this is serious business. She's coming to you because she knows you on assignment here. <laughs> so she's coming to you, Chris. That's right, Elder Rounds. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Even if your spouse isn't here, come on, come on, come on. If you're watching, if you're watching this and your spouse is there, say, honey, come on, hold my hand. Honey, hold my hand. My well, baby, we don't hold hands. Hold hands today. Pastor Wayne said, hold hands. Hold my hand. Hold his hand. Hold her hand. It gripped my spirit last week. I think I shared when I was talking to Pastor China. And she says, I'm looking through a photo album. And I'm seeing marriages and people that I've known for years, 20, 30, marriages dissolved. And these are people that are in the faith. And the Holy Spirit this week said, because nobody's fighting for the marriage. Because their bride and groom represents Christ in his body. And that's why as soon as you say I do, the enemy has a target on your back. 
the enemy has put a target on your back. And at times it gets hard, it gets rough, and you, you, you busy fighting with each other and haven't even recognized what we fighting about. Our personalities are fighting. We're fighting against old stuff. We're fighting something. And the Lord says, you better recognize who your real enemy is. I need every husband to repeat after me. Come on, husbands. I need you to repeat after me. I need you if your spouse is here, look at your spouse. Come on, look at your spouse, baby. Look at your spouse. Look at her, 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 look at her. It says, baby. Yeah, I said, baby. You can do a little baby talk. We, we're going to talk. Say, baby. I love you. And I repent. Forgive me for any wrong. And not being the man or the husband I needed to be at times. But from this day forward, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight in prayer. I'm going to fight in prayer. I'm going to fight in the word. I'm going to fight for us. I'm going to fight for us to make it. I'm fighting for us. I hope you, those of you watching are doing this. I'm fighting for you. Oh, Robo Shandaya. Come on, those of you standing here, pray too, pray too. Don't just be a spectator. I need wives. I need you to look at your husbands now. I need you to say, honey. <laughs> I'm just giving you, come on, honey. Because you need to be a little tender. We're breaking every hardness. We're breaking every hardness. Honey. Come on, call him honey. Because he needs to be your honey again. Oh my Jesus, he needs to be your honey. He needs to be your honey. He needs to be your honey. If you're watching this, honey, come on, call him honey. Honey, I love you. Come on. Honey, I love you. I'm going to teach y'all today. Honey, I love you. Honey, forgive me for not always being there for you. Honey, forgive me. And honey, I'm going to fight for you. Because you my man. Come on, tell him. You my man. And I love you. I'm going to listen to you. Honey, I'm going to fight in prayer. I'm going to fight in prayer for you to make it. I'm going to fight for you to make it. I'm fighting for you that your dreams would come true. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. I'm going to fight for you in prayer. So, honey, give me a kiss. Let's seal it with a kiss. Come on, seal it with a kiss. Come on, seal it with a kiss. Come on, seal it with a kiss. Y'all get shy in church. Where you think kiss came from? Talks about it in the Bible. Talks about it in the Bible. If you're watching me, seal it with a kiss. Seal it with a kiss. Did you seal it with a kiss? Did you seal it with a kiss? Did you seal it with a kiss? I'm asking, did you seal it with a kiss? Did you seal it with a kiss? Seal it. Because we've made, we, 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 no, kissing is in the Bible. It came from God. God even kisses us. When we worship God, we kiss God. When you give him and say, Lord, I love you, you're kissing him. Every single person, raise your hand. Every single, I don't know what status you are, every single person, raise your hand. Because usually there's more singles sometimes than married. Every single person, come on, raise your hand. Come on, single people. Oh, you didn't, you didn't play with him? You didn't play the drums with him? Never, never. 
every single person. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, thank you for loving me. Lord, I repent. Lord, forgive me for feeling like I'm missing out. But Lord, while I have the opportunity, while I'm in my singleness, teach me to fight. Fight for myself. Fight for others. Fight for you. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight in my singleness. Single folks, can I say this to us? We got to look out for one another. Single folks, we got to look out for one another. We got to look out for one another. And I'm not talking about hooking you up with some boo. I'm talking about looking out for one another. We'd be like, okay, don't, don't, don't let that get in your spirit. All right, where you at? I haven't seen you in a while. You all right? How you doing? We looking out for one another. I can call you. I, I, I got people watching, so I can't say everything. I'm. You gonna be my lightning rod? I'll say it like that. I taught you about lightning rod before. I need you to fight with me. Y'all all right? We're going to let you go. We're going to let you go. But we're going to fight in this house. I want this going to be a new house. Because we're fighting through our emotions. And we're fighting for the faith. We're fighting for each other. To build one another up. People come in. New people come. We fight. We, we fight for you. You're going to make it in the faith. They're going to be like, whoa, whoa. This church fights for you. You get an art with somebody, get it right. Get, what did I say? I don't want to hear about, well, past time. No, get it right. Because that means to me you're not fighting for the faith. And when I get on you and say, well, you and you ain't fighting for the faith. Don't be like, oh, pastor, you don't know. No, fight for the faith. And if the person that you went to can't understand, you come and grab somebody else who's a third person who's impartial. Get it right. We're going to fight for each other. I wish we could hug. I know we COVID time. Okay, Tanya, thank you. Look at your neighbor and just go. Air hug. Do an air hug. Everybody at home watching, we love you. We're giving you an air hug today. We, gonna, we got some announcements for you this week. We're just going to share these announcements, and I'm just going to release a blessing as Deacon Michelle comes and releases the announcements, and, and we're going to let you go. So two minutes. Give us two minutes. Two minutes. The announcements for this week are as follows. Tuesday morning, join us at 6 a.m. on the conference line, 605-475-4800, access code 666-307-POUND. Join us Wednesday for noonday prayer on Zoom. KEC will be starting a six-week teaching on the kingdom starting this Wednesday, September 22nd through October 27th on Zoom at 8 p.m. This week, we will be studying the origin of mankind in the kingdom, also God's assignment. Come with an open mind, ready to engage, share, and learn. The Give Plus mobile app is sunsetting, and you will not be able to use it to make gifts after September 30th. Those of you who use the Give Plus app, you now need to change to Vanco Mobile. 
You can download Banco Mobile on Google Play or the Apple Store. Your Give Plus Mobile app credentials will stay the same in Banco. There's no need for a new user ID or a new password. You, uh, your Give Plus Mobile app uh, payment methods in history should seamlessly transfer over to Vanco Mobile app. If you have a recurring gift set up, they will continue to be made as scheduled. However, if you need to make a change, a new account or a new payment date or new card information, you will have to do that through Vanco Mobile. These changes are only for Give Plus Mobile users. Those that give online and through the website, you are not affected by these changes. Those are the announcements. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed week. Next week, we will not be fasting this week. We're going to fast next week. We're going to fast next week. All right? We're fasting next week. But some of you that thought we're fasting this week, go ahead, fast twice. That's okay. You can fast this week and next week. God bless you. Uh, but we're officially fasting next week. You don't want to be, you don't want to miss next week. We got something special in store for you on next week. You do not want to miss next Sunday, either in person or online. Be here next week at 11. We love you much. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. And may God just cover you. And may God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you much. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you.